Trusty Walker with the Hilton Next Learning Center. Today what we want to do is we want to go through the navigation and programming of a damp boss inverter slash VFD if you will. And with me to help out is the R&D manager, John Bittner. Hey John, welcome aboard. How are you doing? Nice, nice to be here. Great. Now what we're going to do is you're going to go through and show us how to navigate through all the screens and explain right. the screens to us? Absolutely. Alright, let's get to it. We'll go through all the basic settings and then drives and motors. Good. Alright, so if we start with our main menu, okay, so we've got the different parameter sets that are in here. You'll see 0, 1, 2, 3, um, and each one has you know, a different group, group of settings in it. Um, for instance, 0 is the basic ones, operation display, you go in there and look, language, your, your basic speed, regional settings, North America, um, Go back, set up uh, operations. What, is, you know, what do we do? We can actually go through a, a, a quick menu that will go through and give you your basic settings, whether it's a, uh, a compressor, pump, um, variable torque, or constant torque. John, I noticed that when you're going through the different screens, I notice on this address of the screens, I guess, you have this 0 0, now you have a star. Could you speak to that real quick? Sure. 0 0's parameter group 0, and then within the parameter group is a, a, a subcategory, basic settings. The asterisk just means that there's there's other other menu items within that subcategory. Okay, so okay, so, so, we're at, we're, so we're 0 1 for language, 0 2 for motor speed. And as long as I don't see an asterisk, I know there's no more menus once the asterisks are gone. Right. The asterisk just means there's more submenus. Exactly. Oh, okay, exactly. great. So you'll see that 01 star. So we go in and set up operations. There's several under there. Kind of makes it easy to know where you're at then. Exactly. So there's no more submenus because there's no more asterisks. All right, fantastic. And back out. So we go down, uh, uh, display. What, what, how do you want the resolution, small lines, large lines, what do you actually want to display on there, motor current, allows you, you know, display speed, voltage, uh, it gives you a lot of choices, your actual power, and your frequency. And then you put a custom readout. And that would be say, typically something special from the factory? Like percentage of your, uh, your frequency. So if I have 0 to 100% and it's uh, uh, 30 to 60 is my 0 to 100%, it'll tell me where I am in that, in that range of frequency. All right. Keypad, how do you want the keypad to, um, you want it enabled so that you can start, stop, manually control the unit, you can disable it so that it's only external reference only. Uh, gives you a copy and save. So once you, you've got multiple drives, once you put all these parameters in there, you can copy it from here, take your display out, put it in the other one, and uh, go ahead and copy to the next one. Well, that makes programming pretty easy. We go back out. Um, within, the, within the menu hierarchy, if you back out, it takes you to the next level up, next level up, and then eventually back to your main screen. When you get back, you go to main menu, and get back to where we are. So on my main menu, it says main menu, I have the address in the very first screen, and then I have the two asterisks behind it, and that kind of says, hey, you're as high as you're going to be able to go here. Now let's start drilling down to the sub menu. Exactly. So you see your parameter sets, 0, 1 again, and then you go back in there, and then you get the 0, dash 0 star. Um, load and motor lets you define what, what the load is, if constant torque, variable torque. Um, your compressor sizing, your pump sizing, whatever. This since this is for a, a rack, um, we would do you know, what size uh, compressor is it? Um, motor data for that compressor. Whether it's horsepower or kilowatts, it tells you the, exactly what size. Is it. So, John, if, is this where it says motor power and horsepower? If I wanted to change that, what would be? Is it a process? What would be the process for changing that? If I go in, it puts the asterisk or the highlight, the cursor actually on the horsepower. Now, okay, now when you set in, once I'm here, if I hit the OK key. So if this is the parameter that I want to set, I hit OK. All right. And then I can go in and adjust. 
and then from there it's just page up, page down, arrow. Okay. Now once I get to where I want to do, how do I save it? If I want to cancel, I just hit cancel, backs out. Okay, okay that's arrow. good. It's like, I hit, hit OK, and let's save. So the OK is kind of a save key for me. So make sure I, that's where I want to be uh, before I hit the OK. Otherwise, hit the cancel button, and it goes back to where Exactly. Wherever I was. Okay, exactly. that's really good to know. If I change it to 25, I hit OK. It tells me what my old setting was. Oh, all right. And then you say. Fantastic. Now, once I leave that screen though and come back, that old setting probably goes away? Yes. Okay. So it's just one last chance for me to make sure that's what I want to program. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Great. And then if I say, well, I'm not sure I wanted to do that, at least you'll have it there in front of you to say, okay. All right. What I wanted to go to. Uh, advanced motor data. Um, it, it really goes into a lot of stuff that we typically don't deal with, like the state of resistance, and the motor resistance. Uh, characteristics about the actual motor itself that we really doesn't really apply to us. A lot of this has to do with efficiency. Motor poles, yes. Um, if you've got uh, Especially with pumps, if you've got a 1750 or a 3500 RPM, you would change that. Okay. That, that would change the characteristic of RPM. Um, but again, the resistance, um, we really don't have that information. Um, the dependence set is far from start. You have a lot of your, uh, your characteristics, again, that we don't really, really use. Um, it's more for process control. Um, Alright, yeah. yeah. For like UPS or one of those you say process controls? Um, like, like uh, conveyor systems. Here, yeah. Slip compensation, again, we don't really have that information, we don't use it. Um, but there's, you know, with induction motor, um, there's slip. So in order to get you, you know, improve your efficiency or actually get very accurate, uh, kilowatt readings, you would put your, okay, this is my slip compensation, which means this is the the amount that the the, uh, the, the motor's slipping from its frequency, its base frequency. Again. So a lot, of, a lot of things that we don't really use, um, but it's nice to have if you're ever in a position of using that for work. You will have process control. Start adjustments. Start delay, if you want to, you know, it's only get the run, I want to delay it. So function post. Um, this sometimes we are, we do actually use, uh, especially in a stop function, mm -hmm. post to stop. So these drives will actually break something to, to, to stop, which um, a lot of times, you know, causes, if it's too much of a load and you're trying to break it too quickly or decelerate too quickly, you know, you'll end up tripping, tripping breakers and all that. Um, so typically, we, when it's we go, go to stop, um, we, we just let it go. Especially on like a condenser fan motor. Flying start, yeah. A condenser fan motor is a good example, for a, especially for a flying start. Um, if, the, if the fan happens to be spinning when you're telling it to run, it'll go out there and look at that motor, catch it, and then start it basically where it's at. Okay. Oh, well, that's, that's a good, that's a flying start, yeah. Right. That makes sense. For compressor, that doesn't really apply, but for, for something like a fan, absolutely, absolutely. And then starting speed, zero hertz, I can say I want to start at 20 hertz. Um, max speeds. Stop adjustments, again, are very much the same. Push on stop, post. Motor temperatures. This has to do with a lot of the overloads, uh -huh. thermal protection. Okay. Um, you have different settings like a class 10, class 20. Based on what the motor is right. equipped with. Okay, so we go back to the general settings, the motor data. We go back out. Brakes. This is braking. Again, we don't really use this. Um, it has to do with like, the braking of the of motor to slow it down rather than coasting. Reference ramps. This is this is pretty important. Um, it gives us the typically we use a zero to ten volt signal. Sometimes a forty twenty, but usually zero to ten volt, and it tells us what those limits are. Is it a zero to ten? Is it is it uh, zero to five? Um, 
and then how they uh, what they're you know, how they are relative to, to actual speed. So by zero to ten, uh, zero to sixty hertz. Is it a thirty to sixty hertz? It allows us to get that scaling in there. So our minimum reference and our maximum reference in this case. Um, and this pertains to our, our reference at zero volts is zero hertz. All right, all right. Our reference at at uh, 10 volts or 70 volts. So it gives us a, that scale. And if I wanted that to start at 30 hertz, then my zero volts would be 30 hertz, and my 10 volts would be 70 hertz. Exactly. Well, actually, well, that's our basic navigation in the drive, and it's pretty easy to set up if you can see. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate your time. This is Rusty Walker with the Hilton Phoenix Learning Center. I appreciate you watching this video. I hope you learned from this. John's given us some really great information, and I, again, thanks for watching.